you begin the discussion in challenging knowledge with these three basic positions in epistemology uh, beyond skepticism about our ability to have knowledge in the first place. And those are foundationalism, uh, coherentism, and infinitism. And since these are often the starting points for discussions of epistemology, maybe we could start by just laying them out and why, or some reasons why they're generally held not to work. Okay. Um, they kind of arise from um, a picture of justification, uh, more or less explicit. So the idea is that um, if you know something, so in some sense, you have a justification for it. So that that's really the starting point. Um, everything I'm going to say is challengeable. I just want to make that point. Yeah. Um, and, and much of what I'm going to say is challenged by me. Okay. Anyway, that said, you start with this picture that if you know something, there's a justification. And then it looks like you're introduced to a justification regress of some sort. Um, and this is the uh, a very, very old argument, or at least it has an ancestor in Greek philosophy that's very, very old. In what sense the argument as it shows up in the contemporary setting is that original argument, who knows? Uh, historians have a lot to say about this. But anyway, you've got justification. It looks like you get a justification regress um, because you have to supply a justification for the justification. And the idea is it can't dangle in the air. So now this can go on for a little while. And then we have three options, it looks like. And so this really does look like a very tight um, logical squeeze. Um, you can stop. And that looks like, well, then somehow, in some sense, where you stop has got to be a foundation. Or you can uh, kind of uh, circle back or in some way um, find that what you've been coming up with is mutually supporting. So that looks like some version of coherentism. Uh, and then the third thing is you can just keep going. Okay. And so those are roughly the three positions. Now, the uh, foundationalist position, there's been debate in the literature for a long time. It's, it's, it shows up in all the anthologies where, you know, people are trying to say, look, um, it doesn't make sometimes it's it's not rational to have a foundation an epistemic foundation because that's a place where you stop where you don't have a justification because if you had a justification you wouldn't have stopped okay so if you did stop you you did it without a reason and i think klein literally tries to take that phrase literally without a reason well you can't do something without a reason oh that's horrible so that's one way of alluding to where the foundational um, uh, foundationalism seems to face a problem. And then there are other sorts of things like, well, you know, what's the nature of this foundation? Oh, it's, it has to be a priori. That leads to all sorts of concerns. So there's issues about how to categorize the foundation in a way that looks philosophically acceptable. And there is exactly, you know, what would make it rational to have a foundation. The coherentism picture looks like it's in trouble for a variety of reasons, as long as you don't have circularity. Um, um, that almost everyone agrees is terrible. Almost everyone, right? In philosophy, I used to say uh, no position, um, uh, everything rises from the dead in philosophy, just like in Hollywood, so that no position is ever killed forever. I I'm actually... That's a good one. Given the current population of philosophers, there are so many of them, and they all want to occupy unique spaces. No position dies anymore. That's what I almost think is now the situation. But anyway, that's sociology. We'll let it go. You should write a book. The sociology of philosophy? Or, or just No, that was a bad joke. Those were two good sayings. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that said, um, uh, the... A coherentist picture is somehow the knowledge 
uh, uh, works together. So the justification comes from some sense in which uh, the beliefs are working together. And the thought is more than consistency has to be involved. And now the question is, what is that more and how do you characterize it? And there's worries about that. So, I mean, what I'm trying to get at here is that none of these none of these positions look fatal. It, it's just they all look like mm, they're not quite working or we're not happy with them. And then the infinitism, which to some extent was an outlier until, I don't know, uh, late 20th century. It was always thought you really had two positions, given that you couldn't go on forever, just justifying after justifying after justifying. And now the thought is, yeah, you can go on forever. That's okay. Um, you know, and you can be an optimist about it or a pessimist about it, but you can just keep offering justifications. And actually in attributing, I wanted to look at that very carefully because one of the interesting things that happens when you probabilistically support a position is that what happens with um, straight inference, deductive inference is that the support is given only by the premises. But in a probabilistic inference, the support is given by the premises and by the fact that they probabilistically support. And because of that, you can get a kind of um, convergence. So it goes on infinitely, but it doesn't have to go on for good. And so I found that really, really interesting. And, and uh dealt with it in attributing to see if it was going to give us a way to make infinitism work. And I drew the conclusion that it wouldn't. But so that my view is that none of them really work. And, um, and, and that actually, as it turns out, uh, the way out is kind of straightforward. Well, before we go on to that way out, just as an item of, fun historical interest is yeah. this greek analog to the problem of justification uh grippa's trilemma yeah 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 i'm sorry um so i tend to be can we go through that just for fun really quickly can oh we go through well you know it, it it's just what i kind of said you know okay. you you've got to offer a justification for what you said well okay you either stop you either circle back or you keep going forever. Those are your only options. And as far as Agrippa is concerned, right, none of them work. And so you can't justify anything. And now what, the question is, what kind of skepticism does this result in? Hmm. Because, of course, that's not straightforward either. Okay. But it's justification skepticism. So you end up not being able to justify anything. And therefore, you don't know. 